In this video, we are going to continue practicing how to solve rational equations such as these, and such as these. Um, but we'll also, uh, in addition to solving them algebraically, we are going to use our technology to see how we could solve them graphically. And uh, whereas in the previous video, I used Desmos, which is an app and a website, desmos.com. Um, in this video, I am going to use the TI-84. Now, this is a color edition, uh, but I think it works the same way if you have a black and white calculator. So, first of all, algebraically. When you simply have a fraction equal to a fraction, I think the easiest thing to do is to cross multiply. So, I can uh, make a new equation by multiplying these together and putting it on one side of the equation. So that's going to be 5x minus 7 times x minus 2. All right, now I can make another equation by, mul uh, sorry, not another equation, but the other side of the equation, I will have these guys. So that would be 8 times x minus 2. So if I double distribute or FOIL or whatever you want to call it, then um, 5x times x, that's going to give me 5x squared. All right, inner plus outer. Inner I have negative 7x, outer I have negative 10. So together that's negative 17x. And negative 7 times negative 2 is positive 14. So that's when you get when you multiply these binomials together. Um, here I would just distribute, so that'll give me 8x minus 16. Now I'm going to get 0 on one side uh, to do this, so I will subtract 8x from both sides. And I will add 16 to both sides. So I'm going to have 5x squared, whoops, it's not a very good looking 5. I'm going to have 5x squared and then minus 25x and then plus 30 is equal to 0. Now I'm going to try to factor this if I can. I see a common factor of 5, a GCF, if you will. So if I pull out the 5, then that leaves me with x squared minus 5x plus 6. Now, as I try to factor this, um, x squared can only be x times x. 6, um, it could be 2 times 3 or 6 and 1. I think it's going to be the 2 times 3 option this time. I'm trying to get a negative 5x. Inner, I have 2x. Outer, I have 3x. To make a negative 5, both of these would have to be negative. And a negative times a negative is a positive. That's why I knew to pick this option. So I have now factored it. I can find the solution by setting these factors equal to 0. Now 5 can't equal 0, that's a constant. So it's just a matter of um, x minus 2 could equal 0 or x minus 3 could equal 0. Either one of, those will, either one of these will solve the equation. Um, so x could equal 2 or x could equal 3. So these are the solutions, 2 and 3. Now, if I want to solve this graphically, I'm going to take my original equation and rewrite it as two separate functions, which would look like this. I would have one function that would be y equals, and uh, I'll consider the first side of the equation as one function. 
and then I'll make a new function out of the other side. So y equals 8 over x minus 2. So these are my two functions. I'm going to graph these and see if I can find any intersection points. So if I look on my TI-84, so I've, I've hit the y equals button, which brings me here. Then um, my first equation is uh, y equals 5x minus 7 over x minus 2. So I need to go into fraction mode. So to do that, I hit alpha and then y equals. And option number 1 is for fraction, so I could just hit enter. So now I've got a fraction. What did I say I wanted? 5x minus 7 over x minus 2. Okay, so there's my first equation. Uh, I'm going to hit graph and see what I can see so far. Okay, so there's a graph of that first equation in blue. Alright, so now I'll go down to the next uh, line for the next function and I'll type in 8 over x minus 2. So again, alpha y equals will take me into function mode. I'll just hit enter. And it was 8 over x minus 2. Okay, now let me hit graph again and see what I've got now. Okay, now I need to know the intersection points of these two functions. So you see uh, one intersection point is right about here, and the other one is probably going to be off the screen uh, down below a little bit. So since this one is right on the screen, let's go ahead and try to find this. So um, to find the point of intersection, I will go into the calc menu. Calc stands for calculate. So it's blue, so I'm going to hit the blue button here. So second, trace. And you see right here, there's an option for intersect. So I could scroll down, or I could just hit the number 5. So um, it's looking for an intersection. So I'm going to try to get as close to this as I can. So um, I'm just going to arrow my way over there. Okay, see the cursor appear? It's going too far. Too far. I guess I got carried away. Okay, so let me tap my way back a bit. All right, basically I'm trying to move the cursor as close as I can to that intersection spot. All right, so that's pretty close. So I'm just going to hit enter three times. So it says first curve, I hit enter. Now it says second curve, I hit enter again. It says guess, I'm just going to ignore that and hit enter again. You can see it's thinking, thinking, bam. It's found the point of intersection. It is the point 3 comma 8. Now the x coordinate uh, is going to be one of the solutions to the equation. x equals 3. Okay, so, and in fact that does match up with um, one of the values that I found. Um, now let's look for the other point of intersection. Be careful because something very strange is going to happen. It looks like if these two are going to intersect, they are going to intersect off the screen down below. So I need to change the window so I can take a look and see what's going on. So I will go to the window. If I want to see lower, I need to change the minimum Y value. So I'm going to make this something much smaller, um, like negative 20. Take a look at the graph now. Now it's twice as low. Hmm, interesting. They're much closer together, um, but they're still not quite intersecting. They're not crossing. 
Now, um, they seem to be straightening out a little bit here. Uh, what's going on there? Well, let's look at the window and make this even lower. Let me jump down faster. And I'm going to go all the way down to negative 100, because surely they'll cross by, by then. Hmm, that is very disappointing. Um, they seem to be very, very close together, but I'm not seeing um, the red function cross over the blue function. And also, they just seem to be flattening out and going almost vertical right here. Almost as though there's an asymptote here. Wait a minute. Let me put this back to the way it was for a second. All right, these seem to be curving and getting closer and closer to a value of 2, but never crossing over 2. Um, there seems to be a vertical asymptote here at 2. Now let's look back at my equations. Oh yeah, that's right. If I have a function like 5x minus 7 over x minus 2, um, I look at the denominator to see what the vertical asymptote should be. And uh, according to this, there should be a vertical asymptote. I'll put it in green. Um, there should be a vertical asymptote of x equals 2. All right, that's a vertical asymptote. And look at the other equation. Again, another vertical asymptote of x equals 2. So if both of these have the same vertical asymptote, then looking back at the graph, they're both going to get closer and closer to 2, but never reach. So the red function is never going to cross the blue function, because they're both approaching the same asymptote. And um, it seems like the blue function is further over. So the, the red function is never going to catch up. Um, so they never will have an intersection point, because there's an asymptote there. Um, but wait a minute, you say. We solved the equation, and we got two solutions, 3 and 2. So how can 2 be a solution when it's an asymptote? Um, that's a good question. And the answer is, it can't be. 2 is what we call an extraneous solution. All right, it's extraneous means um, you found a solution algebraically. You, you didn't make any mistakes, but yet, the answer you found doesn't make sense. Now, if I try to take 2 and plug it back into the original equation, all right, let me erase this extra stuff. A solution means if you take that value and plug it in, um, you should get a true statement, all right? In this case, the same thing on both sides. For example, if I take 3 and I plug that in to both sides of the equation, I should get the same answer. All right, do you want to see that? Sure you do. Say if I took 3 and I plugged it in for x. Let's see what that looks like. So, OK. So I'm plugging in 3. So that would give me 5 times 3 minus 7 over 3 minus 2. OK, that gives me a value of 8. Now, if I, if I substitute um, 3 into the other equation, then I'm going to have 8 over 3 minus 2. Well, we don't really need a calculator for that. If I put a 3 right here, that would be 8 over 1, which is, again, 8. So. If I, put, if I substitute 3 in for all these x's, I get 8 on the left, and I get 8 on the right. So that's a true statement, All right, which makes sense, because that's what it means to be a solution to the equation. But if I plug 2 in for all the x's, am I going to get a true statement? Well, no. Um, 
No, I won't, because if I plug in 2 right here, imagine that I put in 2 for this x and 2 for this x. x is not allowed to be 2, all right? That's one of the excluded values, because 2 minus 2 is 0. In the denominator, you can't divide by 0. 2 minus 2 is 0. So this would be undefined, and this would be undefined, all right? Undefined equals undefined is not a solution. It's undefined. So that's why 2 is an extraneous solution and cannot be counted among the solutions. So if this were a test or something like that, and um, so what would you put for your final answer? Say if this was problem number 5 and you're supposed to write your answer on the line, you would put x equals 3. And that's all. You would not put x equals 2. Now, if I looked at your work, I would like to see that you circled it or crossed it out and wrote extraneous if I look at your work. All right, so that was very interesting.